print email Facebook Twitter more ABC Melbourne radio hosts identity theft nightmare could also happen to you someone has been imitating ABC Melbourne radio host Hilary Harper, and certainly not in a flattering way. Harper's purse was stolen earlier this year and she has since been locked in a battle with multiple agencies that think the thief's bad behavior was actually her. After someone racked up $700 in tap and go purchases, Harper reported the card stolen and was able to get her money back, but that was only the beginning. Six months later I started getting very weird letters, saying, here's your new debit card, here's your new bank account, here's your new phone, she said. My ID cards have ended up with some very shady people and the months later I'm still tracking around everywhere trying to convince people that it's not me doing all this stuff. How common is it? Harper's is not an unusual story, according to David Lacey, a professor of cyber security and managing director of IDCare. Mr. Lacey founded the not-for-profit support service and sees a new case every five minutes. The criminals are making a good fist of it, he said. They know exactly what they're doing. About 3% of the cases IDCare deals with each month are people who have had their wallets stolen. Telephone scams are much more common, accounting for about one-third of the caseload. Mr. Lacey said his agency had received no reports from people who'd had their credit cards scanned by someone walking past with a radio frequency identification RFID, machine. A lot of people are buying those referred sleeves that help protect credit cards from being tapped, he said. If it makes you feel safer, great. But we've had no reports of somebody saying my credit card has been compromised because someone's waved a magic wand by my wallet. What exactly are the criminals looking for? The key information most criminals want is a driver's license number or passport information. So if one of those two credentials are compromised, the chance of misuse greatly escalates, Mr. Lacey said. He said some criminal groups paid people with drugs if they stole mail. That quantity of drugs is escalated if they're seizing driver's licenses or other key credentials. The crooks know exactly what they're after. What to do if your identity has been stolen Mr. Lacey said in cases of identity theft. The onus had been put on the victims to prove their innocence. He said victims spent on average about 27.5 non-consecutive hours responding to their identity theft. It's a ridiculous situation that a victim of a crime has to carry the load, contact 20 different organizations, work out for themselves what they need to do and have the system in most cases just absolutely work against them. At the end of the day, for most people, a compromise of things like a license is a compromise for life. How to avoid it happening to you Mr. Lacey said the first rule of thumb was good companies don't ring you and ask you for information about yourself. The second thing to look out for is people calling to inform you your computer has a technical issue or a virus. They're quite smart in what they're doing. They realize you've got a computer. They realize most people in the community aren't confident about how computers work and it's easy to bluff people, he said. If someone is calling you purporting to be from the likes of Telstra or the Auto or whoever it might be and they're asking you to prove who you are, and they call and make your own inquiries by researching the number to call and confirm whether or not they called in the first place. So you take control of that conversation engagement, don't let the scammers, because the scammers are trying to scare you into action. Who is the most vulnerable? Mr. Lacey said most of the calls for help he'd received were from victims aged between 25 and 40. But they were just the people who were aware of the service and were utilizing it. He said he believed older people were the most vulnerable, particularly the elderly living alone. It is common for crooks certainly to know a little bit about someone before they call, he said. There's no bystander, there's no one involved in that conversation that can say, this is a scam, hang up. Mr. Lacey said there was no relationship between victims of deception and intelligence. There's a misnomer in the community that they must be stupid. That's got nothing to do with it. The crooks are very good at what